Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to expand on the, f on the idea of pressure in your golf swing. I believe this is really going to be the key for you this season in controlling not only the direction that the golf ball's going, but also the distance that you're hitting the golf ball. An awful lot of golfers are out there kind of waving the thing around as if um, it's going to find its way magically back to the golf ball, and it's really not the case. You've got to get a feeling of controlling the club head, controlling the golf club as a total entity in the golf swing. And this is no different than if you were to be throwing a ball or a frisbee or anything through the air, you will not be passive with your arms and hands in the downswing. You will not be passive with your body, but you will be working with the forces of nature and with the weight of the object that you're throwing. And I think a lot of you have really kind of not feeling the weight of the object that you're swinging here, which is the golf club. What I want you to do then today is get a feeling for that. And we're going to try this, uh, first of all, with a couple of simple little pitch shots. And then we're going to move up to the driver because these are kind of the two shots where this is absolutely essential. Uh, one of the big mistakes that we get when we're pitching the golf ball is that we're really kind of not able to control that low point and therefore you're catching it fat, you're catching it thin. Um, you're never really kind of getting to the bottom of the of the arc and you're never getting that kind of consistent strike on the golf ball that you need to control distance and direction. At the same time, when we're swinging a driver, there's a big chance that you're kind of going to get the club kind of behind you or too far in front of you because you're just not balancing out these forces in the downswing. And maybe you're not getting to the absolute correct position at the top of your swing. So I want to try and help you with both of these shots today. We're going to start with the pitch shot because it's just an easy way of getting a feeling for the weight of the club and the swing of the club. And we're going to do it by just taking the hands back to around about hip height. When you do that, when you make your back swing, you want to be kind of hinging the, the wrists up. You want to have the feeling of the club being taken back. And what you're doing when you're doing that is you're actually collecting energy. You're picking the club up and giving the club energy. And to a certain extent, you are moving the club back and away behind yourself. And when you change direction, you want to kind of catch that force, catch the feeling of the golf club trying to escape out of your hands behind you and apply an opposite pressure to not only stop it, but to move it back down towards the ground. And you're going to do this simultaneously with your hands, your arms, and also with your body but I want to give you a kind of a feel of where you should be feeling this. So when you get to the change of direction, the first place you're going to feel it is obviously in your hands. As you stop lifting the club, as you stop hinging the club, you want to immediately start moving in the other direction. This will strangely enough, give you a feeling of pressure building under your trail foot. Because of the forces of nature trying to move the club now back away behind you, you have got to apply force in the opposite direction. And your hands and your arms are actually getting their force through the body and out of the ground. And that's why you should feel an immediate buildup of pressure on your trail foot. This is a good sign and that's what you want to be looking for, the transition point as you change direction. In fact, then it's a question of balancing the feeling of the club, the weight of the club, with the turn of your body and the swinging down of your hands. It is not a passive, passive movement. We are not just letting the club drop. We are not waiting for the club. We are moving forward. The rotation of your body, the pressing off from your trail foot, will create inertia, which will mean that the club will resist your hands even more as you turn back towards the target. This is where it can get dangerous if, you, if your arms are too soft, if your hands are too soft, because the club will be pushed into you. You want to be resisting that and pushing the club away from you releasing the wrists, allowing especially this uh, ulnar and radial deviation 
to move the club down, but also back behind you, getting a bit more flexion and pushing the club down to its deep point at the same time turning towards the target. It really is a, a, a play with the forces of nature. You want to have that feeling of pressure on the golf club during the entire downswing and not losing that. You don't want to try and restrict the release though. You want to have the feeling that the golf club is escaping out of the wrist angle and going down towards the ground and really allowing the sole of the club to hit into the ground through the golf ball. Don't try and control this. You might catch a few fat, you might catch a few thin, but almost always, irrespective of fat or thin, you want to be releasing the club more than you think. Unfortunately, an awful lot of bad shots, fat shots, are not caused just by releasing the club too early, but by stalling your body rotation and unconsciously actually dipping into the ball because you're trying to somehow get the club head back down to the ground. You've got to have the feeling of releasing this angle and really letting the club collide with the ground. Don't be scared of the ground. The club is built to actually interact with the ground and the sole of the club will stop it digging in if you release it correctly. Now I know this all sounds a little bit much, but it's really a question of getting some feeling for what you're doing. Getting a feeling for the weight of the club, getting a feeling for the swing of the club, and getting a feeling for how your body is controlling this, these forces during a golf swing. And I really think that if you can get that kind of feedback from the golf club, stop worrying about the club coming down and the way that it collides with the ground and on the contrary, start to get active in your swing, you'll suddenly find you're getting more and more control, not only on the golf club, but on the golf ball. With no club is this more apparent than with the driver because of the length of the shaft, therefore the length of the lever that we're using in the golf club. And despite the relative light weight of the driver, you should feel the pressure here more than ever. And this is one of the reasons that when people are swinging a driver, they do tend to get their arms too far behind themselves, or they're really kind of uh, going fishing at the start of the downswing. You can use these feelings that we were using with a wedge exactly the same with the driver. You want to have the feeling when you get to the top of the swing and change direction of applying pressure to the golf club immediately, stopping it from moving behind you and starting to move it back out in front of you. But we don't want to be releasing it as if we're fishing. We want to have this feeling of the uh, radial deviation disappearing and the flexion coming, so the club kind of going back behind you. At the same time, this build-up of pressure on your trail foot should give you the feeling that you can now start to rotate towards the target, but you're going to have to resist the forces that your body then creates on the golf club with your arms and hands. Again, I'm trying to control the golf club in the downswing, trying to push it down and release it into its deep point through the ball. And with the driver, the feeling is that this deep point is just before impact, so that I'm just kind of taking the ball away in the upswing. So I can't be dragging it through the golf ball, holding on to these angles, because that's going to stop me getting to the bottom of the swing arc. And that is so important if you're controlling the angle of attack and getting as much distance as possible with this golf club. The only way to learn it is by doing it. So start with a couple of practice swings and start to try and feel the speed that you have to turn and the speed and force that you have to apply to the golf club. Sometimes you'll get your hands getting down there too quickly. 
Sometimes you'll feel your body is rotating without your arms applying the necessary pressure. But once you get the feeling, once you can actually hold the golf club and swing it down towards the golf ball, then put a ball in the way and watch what happens. Now there the balls leaked away a little bit to the right, which tells me that probably my body rotation was a little early or a little quick relative to my arm rotation. If you're getting kind of a bit of a high right one going out there, it means that everything's kind of dropping too far behind you and you're gonna to have to back up on it in order to get the club square at impact. On the contrary, if you start down a little quick with your arms and hands, you're gonna start getting this kind of flat left one if you're a right-handed golfer. Another good feedback for what you've done uh, incorrectly in the downswing. It's just trial and error, folks. You've just got to get out there and do it and try and get this feeling of getting the club down into the ball. And then suddenly one will go out there and you'll know, okay, that is the feeling that I want. And often it will come with the feedback that you've done something intrinsically different to what you usually do, whether it be a little earlier release with your hands, whether it be a little bit more force with your feet, but that is kind of an individual thing in a golf swing that you've got to try and get a handle on. What is it that you feel? What is it that you have to do to get the golf club back onto the golf ball and moving down the target line? Because once you've got that, you're gonna have consistency in your drives that you've never had before because you are now the master of your own destiny. You are pushing and pulling and throwing the golf club down and through the golf ball. You are controlling the club head and indirectly you are controlling the golf ball. Get this right and it's gonna be a great season. Hope you liked it. See you the next time. Bye-bye.